give me a block of concrete and it will remain a block of concrete. Give concrete to this week's master and she will make it slide, glide, fly, hide, bend, weave, dip, dive, drip, slip, stream and strive. Known as the Queen of Curve, she was the first female to win the Pritzker Prize, a two-time winner of the Sterling Prize and the first and only woman to receive a Royal Gold Medal from the Institute of British Architects. In today's Masters episode, we're having coffee with British Iraqi architect Zaha Hadid. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome back to the Masters series. Today we are having coffee with Zaha Hadid. I'm so excited to do this episode. Zaha Hadid has been such an inspiration to me. I can't remember when I first saw her designs or how I came across her designs. Usually when I find someone inspirational, I really definitely remember how and where I came across their work. I can't remember that with Zaha, but I have definitely studied her works just through the internet, just through Googling the designs, reading articles about what she's done. And I think it's incredible. To me, she is the most exciting and incredible architect of modern times. I have studied the work of several architects. I'm thinking about Frank Lloyd Wright in particular. I remember watching a documentary about him when I was in my teenage years, and I was blown away by that house that he designed in America called Falling Water. It's stunning. I'm such a fan of that house. And the thing that impacted me so much there was that he designed that house in three hours. And that has forever inspired me because how do you just, I don't know how that happens, how you just design an entire house in three hours, but he did. And that has always made me think when I've got a three hour block, I always think, well, that man designed an entire house in three hours. And that always, it somehow inspires me to get stuff done or to think, you know what, I can do something or I can write something or do something, whatever I have to do, or, you know, I don't know. I find that inspiring. The fact that one man designed a house. So I've, te- I've checked out his work in a big way. I also studied the work of um, Jaronutsen who built and designed the Opera House. Such a beautiful building, and that building is endlessly inspiring and incredible. Uh, Wow, just, it's it's such a great building, and I'm so lucky that I went to school, and our presentation days would be held in the Opera House each year, so that's pretty amazing. I got to know the building really well um, on the inside. He designed the outside, he never got to finish the inside, and he's never been in it. So, you know, most fa- one of the most famous buildings in the world, he never really got to have much to do with. And then I was thinking about another building, So, because I mentioned some of the architects in this script, and I mentioned uh, Frank Jerry. Now, Frank Jerry is another archety- uh, architect whose work I know, because he designed this crumpled paper bag building that is actually a wing of the university that I went to. So I remember when that building got completed, I think this was some years ago, and I went and had a look at that, took some pictures. That was a very uh, exciting thing. So yeah, I'm definitely into this whole architecture thing. But would I want to live in a Zaha Hadid masterpiece? I don't think I could. I have very simple tastes and I could not um, live in anything like this. But uh, I love what she's achieved in, in, in one very short lifetime. She left the earth far too soon. Uh, gosh, I, I didn't actually look up when, but I know that far too soon. I, I know that for sure. I'll put it up on the screen if, if I'm able to find it while editing. But um, why don't we get into it? Why don't we take a look at this script that I've written? It's on my iPad here, and I'm just going to read it out because there's a little bit of fine detail. And this will prevent me from going down all kinds of tangents. But I'm a massive fan. I think of all the architects and architecture and things that I've seen, she's my absolute favorite. 
And studying her chart has been a real treat because I've compared her chart to the other architects uh, that I know about. And her chart is, is such a standout chart as well. So I'm going to tell you why. All right, let's take a look. I don't have Zaha's time of birth. So we're only working with her moon chart and therefore pretty much just working with 50% of the information I'd like to work with. But I have a solution. I'm going to make this script lean and minimal, slick, like one of Zaha's designs. No fanfare, no extras, nothing sentimental. Let's just take a look at one simple thing. What starlight goes into the making of a great architect? I've done some broad research and found some basic principles that many astrologers would readily agree with. A connection between the 4th and 10th house lords with a really good Venus. Venus because she's so tied in with beauty. And a good Mars is essential too. Mars who represents engineering, construction, land and property. Le Corbusier is a good example of an architect's chart that represents these rules exactly. But on studying the charts of several architects and looking in depth at Zaha Hadid's chart, I can say there are many more ingredients that go into the making of a great architect. I studied the charts of Le Corbusier, Frank Lloyd Wright, Frank Jerry, Jorn Knutsen, and Eero Saarinen alongside my study of Zaha and found that they all had one very strong and surprising thing in common, Libra energy which took my mind back to the video that I made about money moving through the chart. Libra, you ask? Yes, Libra. This is the place where we earn money on a project by project basis. Not only that, but Libra is the ultimate diplomat, the interface between sometimes wildly opposing parties. This makes perfect sense for an architect who interfaces between two very different players. One, the client who wants the world on a string, delivered on a budget of no money. And the engineers, the real men who sweat under the weight of the concrete that's supposed to look like it's flying. In the middle of it all sits the architect, the one who holds the visionary dreams, those visionary dreams in rarefied Libran air. The next placement that's seen in the charts of many architects is Chitra Nakshatra, home to the celestial architect. And where do you find Chitra? In Virgo, of course, sign of the perfectionist, the one whose earthly shoulders are broad enough to handle a lot of responsibility. Guess who has Ketu conjunct the planet of structure himself, Saturn, in the sign of Virgo? Zaha Hadid. This was the first thing I noticed in her chart that she would have been perfecting her architectural skills over many, many lifetimes. This was a person who hit the ground running. It's no wonder she began her career teaching architecture when she was only 30 years old. Mars, and that's also, uh, she's got Pisces there in the 10th. So that's Jupiter in the 10th, Professor, absolutely. Mars in Sagittarius, Mula Nakshatra, is another star making Zaha's chart perfect for her life's work. Academically, she could cover long distances, both through her mind and with her hands, in a very real and grounded way. Though she was called the inventor of the 89 degrees, whose designs could be off in some way, I believe it was the contents of her Jupiterian houses that kept the ambition high and her focus on the bigger picture at all times. Which planets am I referring to specifically? Mars and Rahu. She knew when to leave the perfectionism of her Ketu placement behind and when to put her foot on the accelerator of Rahu. Another ingredient that was so important in Zaha's incredible career was Jupiter in Aquarius. This was the star that made sure she was working on public buildings and monuments as opposed to designing houses for individual clients. And finally, the last star I want to talk about is that glorious Rahu in Pisces. Who would have thought I'd include Pisces when talking about the chart of an architect? But to me, this is the cherry on top, the best bit, the thing that puts Zaha's chart above the rest. You see, Pisces 
is the home of fantasy thinking. The place where you wonder whether windows could have curves, or you wonder how to make concrete look like it's floating in the sky. The laws of physics are suspended here. All is one, and anything is possible. The basis of her work was suprematism, an abstract art movement whose ideas were associated with achieving an unattainable spiritual purity. All of which got me wondering, if Rahu in Pisces were to come to life tomorrow as a man walking the earth, where might he choose to live? I bet he'd desire nothing less than a Zaha Hadid masterpiece, a place that's futuristic, as far away from the everyday as you can get, and proves once and for all that the impossible is more than possible. So that is my overview of Zaha Hadid's chart. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you enjoyed that very brief analysis of what makes an architect uh, through starlight. And if you've got any comments or insights that you'd like to share about what astrological combinations you think might be, or you know, if you've got anything to share at all, you're very welcome to write in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you, uh, as I always try to get back to you. But thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.